All right, welcome back to our study of volcanoes. Yesterday we learned about some, actually we learned about Marie Tharp, who is a really cool lady, by watching this video. But we also learned about some different parts of a volcano. The summit is the highest point. The throat, which is where the conduit's path that ejects the lava or ash. The crater, which is the mouth. The lava, which is molten rock on the Earth's surface. And if you look down here, magma is molten rock or melted rock under the Earth's surface. Conduit is the passage in the volcano through which the magma travels. Ash are those small particles of lava or rocks which are shot into the air after an explosion. And the vent, again, is the opening of the volcano. Today we're going to learn about the different types of lava, where different volcanoes form, as well as um, as well as the different types of magma. So here are two types of magma. I'll have to fix that for you. Magma is hot, molten, or melted rock under the ground. We have two types. The first type is called mafic. Mafic, and we also um, have two types of igneous rocks, too, that form from these, like two big categories. The um, mafic lava or magma makes mafic rock, and the felsic magma or lava makes felsic rock but that's a topic for another day and perhaps even another course right now all that you need to know is that we have two types of lava or magma mafic is the very first the way we distinguish between them is it is very low in silica and high in iron characteristics because of these different elements that are inside of it it is thinner usually darker colored and it moves really fast it forms basalt rock or basalt igneous rock. Viscosity, so how thick is it? It's low. It would be similar to the liquid of a baby oil. Our other type of lava is called felsic. It is high in silica. It is thick and light colored, slow moving. Rocks formed from this type of magma are called granite. As far as viscosity goes, it is very high. It's similar to the liquid of a corn syrup. So if you've ever used, and maybe even not baby oil, but like vegetable oil, so compare and contrast the difference between vegetable oil and corn syrup. Vegetable oil comes out really quickly, mostly liquid. Uh, the corn syrup, though, comes out really sticky, or you could even think like your regular syrup that you use and flows a little slower. So again... It's low uh, viscosity and thinner and fast moving, but here we've got high viscosity like corn syrup and it is slow moving. They are both liquids though. The most abundant compound in Earth's crust, or silica, sorry, I was defining that there. Silica is the most abundant compound in the Earth's crust. It makes up to 59% of the total composition. The majority of the other part is made out of oxygen. So silica is really what we're testing here or looking for. Felsic, high in silica. Mafic, low in silica. And that would be about the only things I would ask you about those two. I wouldn't necessarily ask you how they're formed, but I might ask you that they're slow moving. And then it's like corn syrup or that it's quick moving and it's like baby oil. I would know that. Moving on though to the boundaries, I'll link this video. She really nicely explains um, the different types of magma. So now we're going to look at the different types of boundaries and what type of volcano or volcanic action we see. So the first is a rift, is our big word. The boundary that it happens at is a divergent boundary. They occur at a long, narrow fracture in the Earth, similar to this right here. They're not explosive, and they have mafic lava. You could find these somewhere like the spreading centers, such as the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. So what happens is as these crusts pull apart from one another, there's an open space. That open space is filled by mantle material or magma, which then comes to the surface and cools, becoming more rock, but that rock will eventually move away just like the other ones. 
and new rock will form. This is what, sorry, listening to the rain. This is what happens at our, excuse me, this is what happens at our, um, this is what happens when we say that the earth, the, the seafloor spreading, when we talk about that, you should have talked about it in eighth grade, when the two plates are pulling apart underneath the ocean's crust and the magma fills up that center, that space, this is what's happening there. This would be an example, that's called a rift. We talked about Marie Tharp yesterday and her discovery of the Mid-Atlantic Rift and other rifts in the ocean and how many people didn't believe what she was talking about because they'd never seen it before with their eyes but she used sonar data to figure out and find these in the middle of the ocean. So again, we have her to thank for showing us that there are rifts. Our next type, I'm oh sorry, this would be one example of a rift. We don't see them very often, not at all, but it's where, and mostly they happen underneath the Earth's surface, but they pull because the plates are pulling apart the magma or lava will seep out. The next type we're talking about is called a subduction boundary. This happens at a con subduction boundary. This is happens at a convergent boundary or subduction zone. So subduction, I hope you've heard that before we talked about it, or you should have talked about it in eighth grade. It's where one of the plates goes down below the other. The one that's going below, like my arrow right here, is becoming part of that mantle material. It is very explosive and it typically has felsic lava. The lava, steam, and ash eject violently out into the earth. Some examples of where you could find this are like in the Andes or Japan. So the Andes are a mountain range. Or Japan. Again, subduction boundaries happen when the two plates are moving together but one gets pushed down below the other, where it eventually melts and become part of the mantle material. Here is an example of one such feature. I can't remember exactly which volcano this is, but it does occur at a subduction zone. They are, again, very explosive. Here's how it happens. So this isn't actually where the, the plates are subducting. So you've got right here the oceanic crust and you've got the continental crust and they are meeting or coming together. We can see that through this arrow right here and this arrow right here. As they push together, instead of going up because they would form a mountain, they actually go, one falls below and starts to become part of the athenosphere or the mantle and it will eventually melt. But that causes a lot of pressure, and that pressure brings some of the other mantle material up and into a volcano. And we can even get these features called volcanic arches that occur at a subduction boundary. The last type of eruption is called a hot spot. These occur at areas of, these are areas of volcanic activity in the middle of the lithosphere plate. These are odd or an anomaly. They're not normal. They can be either explosive or non-explosive, and we're really not sure why they happen. Yellowstone is one such example here in the United States, but the islands and volcanoes of Hawaii are also one such example. They pop up, the red lines right here are tectonic plates. And as you can see, these dots right here are different hot spot volcanoes. They occur in the middle of plates for the most part, and we're not sure why they do that. They shouldn't. We should expect our volcanoes to be along the plates. So we really are not sure why these are there or what causes them. Maybe someday you will discover that. This is one such example. You've got Old Faithful, Yellowstone, the geyser. Here's another example one of the volcanoes. This one looks to be a C1. So here are just our exit ticket, but we're gonna do another set of notes just to check her to see where you are. I've got four boxes, right? three boxes right here, a red one, a green one, and a purple one. They each indicate one type of eruption that we've talked about. 
Hopefully you will be able to tell me based on these right here, the movements of our plates. We've got two plates moving right here. They're moving apart from one another. And we have lava coming up. We know if they're moving apart, we call that, oh, we went the wrong way. We call that a rift. But I guess we're starting right here. Here we've got one plate going under the other that's going this way. That's called subduction. We know that that forces some of that magma up and out to the surface where we call a subduct where a subduction volcano might form like these guys right here. I guess we're moving on to this one. So this is a volcano. The two plates are not meeting. They're in the middle of the plate, so we know it is a hot spot volcano. And then lastly, we already talked about this one. This is a rift volcano. Fantastic. Now we're going to talk about the types of volcanoes. We have three. The very first we're looking at is called a cinder cone volcano, and this will be two lectures broken together, so make sure you watch part two of the video to complete your notes. Cinder cone volcanoes happen at convergent boundaries. They are pretty small. Uh, they are smallest. They move from 100 to 1,000 feet. The most common type of this is the most common type of volcano. They grow really quickly within months or years. They have typically really explosive outbursts, cinders or blobs of lava blow into the air with high gas and pressure. It's made main it's layers of cinder slash lava and what we call scoria, which is low density basalt rock. And again, these are very explosive, very violent, and they are the most common. All right, you will have to catch the rest of the lecture on the other video. Have a great day, guys.